This here is actually the, probably the most um, precious thing we have in the collection. When we moved to this new building about a year or so ago, we actually had this hand carried separately in a car, like sort of in a bed of pillows in the back. This is the first recording of This Land is Your Land, recorded by Woody Guthrie in 1944. This land is your land, and this land is my land. I remember I was riding down the street in an Oldsmobile convertible when I was, you know, I was young. You know, of course, I was in the 50s. And uh, I heard the song, and I go, wow. Some, something about this song was really uh, attractive. I, I didn't understand it at first, but it was just a very powerful message. I saw below me that golden valley. This land was made for you and me. It's a straight arrow. It's not a convoluted spin on the country. It's just this. Man, I walked this, these wheat fields. They're amazing. They're beautiful. And it's also autobiographical. You know, he's telling his story as, as I went walking. This is what I saw. I confess when I first heard it, I said, well, it's a nice song, but it's one of Woody's lesser efforts, says I. Shows how wrong you can be. Uh, Woody had the genius of simplicity. Uh, any f damn fool can get complicated, but Woody really knew how to be simple. There I met a fair young maiden, and her name I never did know. As Woody Guthrie did his hard traveling across the American landscape during the Depression years and beyond, the songs flowed from his pen, thousands of them. It is said that he wrote several songs every single day, and yet, he recorded only a few hundred. I roamed and rambled and I followed my footsteps to the sparkling sands of her diamond deserts. Sung by virtually every American child, This Land is Your Land is deeply ingrained in our national heritage. Well, almost. In the 1950s, Nora Guthrie and her brothers were enrolled by their mother in a new school in New York City. We didn't have a lot of money, so she found a little private school in Brooklyn where the woman who taught music was a friend of my dad's. This woman used This Land is Your Land instead of the national anthem at the school. So when all the kids stood up, and instead of doing the Pledge of Allegiance, everybody stood up and sang, This land is your land. <laughs> and I remember standing there with my brothers. When we first started in the school, it was like third, fourth, and fifth grade. We're all a year apart. And we're standing there looking at each other. <laughs> Okay. I don't know the words. <laughs> this 1944 recording was the first Guthrie ever made of the song. That alone makes it a national treasure. But there's something else that gives it even more significance. There was a big high wall there. When Woody Guthrie had, had written This Land is Your Land originally, he wrote it with some extra verses in it, which aren't in the versions anyone hears. And a couple of those verses were very subversive. There was an anti-private property verse, and there was another one about people standing in bread lines. One bright sunny morning by the shadow of the steeple, by the relief office, I saw my people. As they stood there hungry, I stood there whistling. This land was made for you and me. For years, archivists had been certain that Guthrie had never recorded those verses until one late Friday afternoon at the Smithsonian, when Jeff Place made an astonishing discovery. Woody recorded 75 songs in one day in March 1944, and this was one of them, and, and nobody thought much about it at the time. They kind of put it on the shelf and let it sit there. And for all these years, you know, people always say, well, Woody never recorded those, you know? That version doesn't exist. So one day I was actually dubbing a bunch of these Woody Guthrie things years ago. I was so into what I was doing because I was really enjoying this music. I said, ah, heck, I'm going to do one more, you know? So I pulled this thing out and put it on. And lo and behold, I was playing this, and there was the anti-private property verse in this first version. And all of a sudden, it's like, wow! There was a big high wall there that tried to stop me. The sign was painted, said private property. But on the back side, it didn't say nothing. This land was made for you and me. So I went running out of the hall, hey everybody, hey everybody. Of course everybody left, it was really a drag. You know, there's nobody I could like, you know, hey, come listen to this, you know, but it definitely it was like, you know, a highlight. This land was made. Uh, I think we should go back to the two six. In a Smithsonian edit bay, the digital transfer is made from acetate to computer. But first, the team must select the right stylus for the turntable one of the most critical decisions in the entire process. If you have a, a larger stylus, it won't ride as far down in the grooves. 
Hence, it won't pick up as much of the, the grunge that might be down in those grooves. But also, it may not pick up as much sound. What size was that? This is a 2.8. Once Reiniger chooses the best stylus, he must then clean the dirt and grit from the acetate. The slightest bit of material can alter the sound dramatically. What Pete's doing is, is he has a Q-tip with some distilled water on it, and he's sort of putting it right in front of where the, the needle's going on the record. So by doing that, it's a kind of like a car wash effect. It washes off the needle, bathes the needle, and it just washes the grunge off. The digitized song sounds just like the original, made almost 60 years ago. Other than cleaning the acetate, Reiniger has done no filtering or sound alterations. But several years ago, when the Smithsonian Folkways label commercially sold a Guthrie CD that included this version, the Smithsonian was then able to use an array of sophisticated restoration tools to make the song sound as pristine as possible. So I have what's called a declicker, very clever name. And I put that in, and I can actually audition what I'm taking out for clicks. This is the clicks that, you know, the, the, the dirt and the wearing on the record make when the, the needle passes through the grooves. This is the before. This land was made for you and me. And this is the end. This land is your land, and this land is my land. From California to the New York Island. So it's, it becomes a matter of, you know, learning what the tools will do and also using your musical judgment uh, on a lot of these things. And a lot of this is a judgment call, which rests in the hands of producers and engineers and, and people that work on this material. Some of the most precious sound recordings in the Smithsonian and Library of Congress collection